I remember one time we were all lined up and everybody was getting tickets and they got up to me and the cop said something and I'm all, oh, that's a good metaphor. And he's all, he's all, you know what metaphor means? And I'm all, yeah. So you go to college? I'm all, yeah. Or something like that. You know, you're in high school, you're smart. And he gave, didn't give me a ticket because I was smart and the other kids were too, they, they were punks and they didn't come off as smart or something. I don't know. I was just really a smart ass. I was born in Southern California, a suburbia town called Fullerton, California. It was like, I think, most Orange County towns where uh, I was surrounded by Republicans and people who wanted to be doctors and lawyers and uh, wasn't a whole lot of exposure to the arts, I guess, growing up. I, I think there's a reason that Fullerton bred so much punk rock and that's that it was, it was a, it was a fight against the conservative uh, white middle class and upper class that was there. And with this music, it really changed my life. It changed my, my look on uh, art and culture in general. I went to several community colleges in, in the area and in, and in uh, San Diego for several years and then decided to get my degree at University of California, Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz is one of those great places in California. It has the surf and the water and the ocean, and it was a fantastic place to go to school, very creative. And from there, I moved to San Francisco, and I went to the San Francisco Art Institute, and that's where I got my MFA. This is the grand foyer of uh, Cosmic Debris Headquarters. Uh, this is where we have different events or whatever. Uh, Specifically, we have an art gallery here called Gallery Extraña. I run with my girlfriend, Amy Freeberg, and uh, we use it to expose local artists and other strange artists. Here we have Emily the Strange. Uh, she's kind of uh, our mascot of the place. Uh, hi, Emily, how are you doing? Um, all right, so come around this way. We'll go upstairs. We're entering into the kitty library. This is a collection of uh, cats that we've, we've collected some on our own and a lot of them have been kind of gifted and donated to the library. We take submissions to the gallery, however, I, I kind of put a price limit of $5 on them and we ask for the stranger the cat the better, of course. I think there's, there's something, I don't know if it's past life stuff or whatever, I don't really know anything about any of that stuff, but. I really identify with cats. I really identify with their independence, their uh, staying up and going out late at night. So anyway, cats, I've always had cats in my life. They're the one constant that's around for everything. They're there for the art making, they're there for the tears, they're there for the late night coming home and seeing stuff that no one should see. So lots of cat art. I've, I've as you'll see the watercolor I did there, I've done a number of different series of cat, just cat related art. So we'll come on down to the gallery. So uh, here we are at the main gallery of Gallery Extraña. We're in between shows. Um, this is probably my most recent one. It was actually created for Emily's second novel called Stranger and Stranger. This is also a recent one. It's called A Few of My Favorite Things. What I like about these is you have different characters that fit together one like puzzle piece, but then if you have a white character, it'll be completely surrounded by black characters, but they're all uh, strange and to me they kind of, I mean they come from my imagination and I just love um, characters. I like making up these weird animals. <laughs> For different moods I've created a series of paintings that uh, Depending on how you're feeling for the day, you might want a different character than say you have this Indian deity. And I'm actually feeling a little bit more like Mothra today. So you can, with a flip of the hand, we can see another character emerge. The surrealist artist, of course, I was a big uh, Salvador Dali fan. I was a big MC Escher fan back in high school in college and, and I grew up with the album covers of Iron Maiden and heavy metal and punk rock artists that um, were pretty fantasy based and pretty dark in, in quality and I think the combination of mixing that in with little Star Wars and Dr. Seuss and I think that's kind of where I'm at. 
fantasy is it pushes it pushes your limits. It makes you think more. All right. Somebody asked me if there's some sort of crazy thing that I have to do to get in the spirit of making art. And I would say the only really thing is I gotta put on music. I gotta have something that's kind of driving me through the process or like kind of keeping a certain section of my brain and that rhythm or intensity going or something. It doesn't have to be punk rock. I mean, there could just be weird music from Vietnam or whatever it is. I mean, all kinds of different music kind of juxtapose themselves with each other. And some songs are 20 minute songs, so I get off on a long tangent, but then another song comes in and it changes it up. So it's gonna make me grab another drawing or something. I started playing music in terms of rock and roll in high school. My first few bands were punk rock bands, and I played bass and guitar. I was in a band called Absent Minded, and I was in another band called Patchy Ground Fog. Soon after high school, I was in another band called Bad Acid Taxi. <laughs> a lot of these musicians from that music scene, I still play music with today, and it's 15 years later. In high school, we would, we would do a lot of shirts for our, our, our friends' bands or even punk rock bands where you couldn't buy the shirts and so you had to make them yourself. That's how I see music, very visually. In San Diego, I got a job as a, first as a silk screener, but then I got a job in the art department. And it was the, it was the first time I learned that I could, one, support myself and didn't need my parents' money at all, but two, that I could actually do something creative. And I kind of took that technology of of uh, my knowledge about graphic design and where and the things I like to do in art and put them on t-shirts and learn that I could sell my own shirts and that was how Cosmic Debris was started. There's something that I got when I was in junior high school or high school that really uh, encouraged me to be creative and it's that creativity that has kind of taken me out of depression or any bad situation that's ever happened to me. Being creative and doing art kind of is a way to filter through those negative thoughts and feelings and get it out on paper. And just that exploration is just kind of what uh, fills life for me. Collage and the spirit behind collage making and the taking of different pieces that wouldn't normally go together and fusing them together to tell a new story or create a new being or beast is something I find totally amazing every time it happens. And one of the things I'm most fond about in art is this collage making. So, And that's one of the things that actually drives me as an artist is figuring out how to accomplish something with limited materials or very specific strange materials and cobbling it all together. That process is definitely part of it. I find a lot of my inspiration and material in 50s and 60s Life magazine. There's something about the quality of form they, they took back then. For one, they everything was still hand done. Lots and lots of illustration for stuff still. Stuff was drawn. So it might have been cheaper than taking pictures of and, and reproducing it sometimes. But then the, the forms of the people like the woman presenting the refrigerator. Those poses and those forms of those hands and those gestures are something that's very, something elegant, but also something wrong about it. Probably mo most interesting and crazy and, and totally fun was my trip to Tokyo. I, one of the things that I noted there that made life so fun and, and the culture so interesting is that everything had a character attached to it so a street light would have like a smiley face guy on it or some or there'd be a cutout character saying turn left turn left turn left if you buy a sponge the sponge is likely to have a character that makes it look like it's more than a sponge but when you open it up it's just a sponge so th th that part of that part of everything influenced me it, it told me you can make a character out of a pancake <laughs> 